Oh, we were brothers. Me being the older brother, you know, it, uh, the older brother always tries to pick on a little one. And uh, I remember a time where we were, was, you know, WWF wrestling. We, uh, He caught me on the stairs, and he put me in, like, a back bend, and I just started crying. I was so mad because my little brother got me. Uh, but we, we, we got along. We were brothers, what brothers do. His best friend was our cousin, Sammy. That was his best friend. Uh, and uh, we were all best friends. We were like brothers and sisters, Wes and Doug. And uh, he was just always like the calm one, not trying to fight, not trying to argue when we, it was that. But he was just the smart one. He, he never missed a day of school until he, he, he never missed a day of school until senior skip day. Never missed a day of school. We actually, my uncle was taking him and I to school one day. We were coming around a hill and we hit a pole because it was icy out. My brother walked to school that day. He was definitely the better half of the brothers. Definitely the better one. More loving and everything. You know, I was more of the party scene, started smoking weed and stuff like that. But he uh, stayed in the sports and stayed in the school. He was working when he was a senior. By the time I was a senior, I was locked up. I missed a lot of my brother's high school days and a lot of his athletics when he was doing really good and shining. I missed it. And I kicked my ass for that all the time. I wasn't a big brother that I should have been. He went to um, Western Illinois. He was a leatherneck D1 college athlete and one of my proudest moments was watching my brother pitch against KU. I got on his nerves. I cheered a little, so loud. I was watching, me and my dad were watching a game of him on the internet the next season. Because, you know, his first year there, he, he did good, but he didn't do well. But his second year, they were, I just remember the announcer calling him a Cinderella story. He came home. And, uh. Just never went back. Got hooked on pain pills in the party scene. Pain pills that came from my dad because my dad had so many surgeries and stuff. My dad needed them to not be in pain. I, th I think it was with that was my brother's connection with my dad after my brother got addicted. I've always my brother held resentment against my dad for a little bit. Loved him, but you know that resentment's there for what my dad was. Crackhead, alcoholic, I'll say it. My dad's gone now, too, as well. But um, my dad turned into a pillhead. And I hate saying crack. He was addicted to crack. Sorry. And an alcoholic. And uh, things weren't always good at home because of dad. But with mom, it was like it was perfect. Um, but when he found that connection with my dad, it was crazy to say. But at the time, it was good. Something we all three bonded over. I always tell him, like, why are you here? Go back to school. Even through our deepest days of addiction, I'm like, man, you can still go back to school. Like, you, you can bounce back. And I, I would tell him that. Even me being high out of my wits, I'd tell him that. Like, I don't know why you're sticking around. And then one day as we had some oxycodones and... Uh, I had already been introduced to the needle. And my little brother wanted me to shoot, shoot him up, and I was the first one to put a needle in my brother's arm. I think that's what stuck him here all the way. Kicked my ass and lived with guilt for a long time. I know his death is not my fault. And... Uh, he was a grown man. He makes his own decisions. He wanted me to do it, but I should have never done that. I should have never done that because I know what it did to me. It grabbed me by the devil's horns. It just took me all the way with it. It should honestly be him speaking about me today, honestly. Ups and downs, trying to get clean. 
some good friends trying to pull him out of it and take him wherever he wanted to go to, or take him to where they were living. They had a friend living in Vegas. So he'd take him out there, try to get him off, but my brother would always come back, kind of like I would do. Just, I mean, jail and prison saved my life, really. And my own, my, and myself when I was like, okay, I'm done. But I didn't get that, okay, I'm done until I lost my brother. He'd get arrested and the judges would let him go. I wish they wouldn't have. One of the judges was a big baseball fan watching high school baseball. He remembered him from that and just let him go. This was in the beginning. It's a story I heard from my dad, but I wasn't there. Is one of them favoritism things. They never... Gave him the book like they gave me, and I wish they would have. I really wish they would have. Did he do anything major to deserve the book thrown at him? No, not like I did. <laughs> but sometimes I wish that incident would have happened because he'd still be here today. My brother never got addicted to fentanyl, though. It was pain pills and... um we do heroin here and there, but when when hero, when pain pills got to be hard to get, we would do heroin. We were very picky about who we got the heroin from, and uh, sometimes it would come with fitting on it. We did not want that. April, I think it was the 20th of 2016, I had got some heroin, and there was fitting on in it. I had to be rushed to the hospital. And I, I I woke up, ripped everything out of me. They didn't even ask me for my name. I just left. I stole a truck, got caught. Anyways, I called my brother and my dad. I'm like, hey, you guys need to be careful. And not long after that, I lost my little brother while I was locked up. From the stories I've gathered up is he gave a friend some money to go get him some heroin or pain pills, whatever he could find. And from what I've gathered, um, he was in a house, did the shot. There was fentanyl in it. Because um, at first I was thinking, oh, the heroin, because he was smart. Even the heroin and the Xanax, that could have done it. After, you know, I started thinking about it. But then the toxicology came back and it was fentanyl in his system. And, uh, but anyways, when he overdosed, from what we gather, he was carried to a bathroom, left there, and that's how my little brother was found. I was a trustee in Platte County Jail, and uh, we were on break from lunch to dinner, and I got a call to go down, and I, uh, the captain was like, you need to call your family, and I was like, oh, no, my dad. And um, she looked at me and she was like, no, your brother. And I was just like, oh, fuck. Like, I mean, the pain's still there with my dad, but that's my little brother. And I called my mom and dad, and my brother was gone. May 30th, 2018. I didn't know if there was life after that. They had somebody in federal custody at a point in time, and word on the street was they were charging him with my brother's death, but come to find out, they didn't, and I don't know. I don't know. There was a point in time where when I got, when I got out, I got back into the streets, and I was getting high again, trying to figure stuff out. Thought that was the way for me to figure it out, but it wasn't. I had to figure my life out. I am over four years sober. Um, I have two stepkids, one baby girl, and uh, life is good. Life is good. I just wish my brother and my dad could be here to see it. I'm working. Um, 
coaching baseball. My brother lives through me when I do that. I love them kids. Um, sobriety is has got its ups and downs, but I'll definitely take the worst down day of any good day high as hell out there. I'll take the sobriety bad day any day. I can get through the whole day without having to go to the bathroom or take off early and have to get high. Uh, spending time with family is definitely better because I get more time there. I don't have to leave to go get high because I'm starting to feel sick. I go see my mom more. Got a wonderful fiance, two wonderful stepkids, and a beautiful daughter who I'm fighting to see, but I'll get there. That makes it tough. That makes sobriety tough sometimes, but I have to keep it in my mind. Okay, if I go fuck up, then I'll never see her. I may never see anybody because I may die. I've came a long way. I'd like to say I'm doing pretty good. This right here is my baby brother. He loved the number 99. Uh, these are his ashes. I also have his ashes in here. I keep them with me every day. And his initials are tattooed on my forehead. I never thought I would have uh, my brother's initials on me anywhere. I thought it would be mine on him for maybe his first tattoo. My mom picked this out, and I think she did a pretty good job. That's David Hill. Some of his friends would call him Tonto. <laughs> he, uh, my brother got the, be the better looks as well. He was very dark skin complected, um, curly hair. There's Indians somewhere in a somewhere down the line, and he got it. <laughs> Don't pick it up. Life, life's already short as it is. Find, find a way to have fun without the drugs. I mean. It's, don't don't die young. Don't, just don't do it. I mean, life is way too short. And if you've been through it, spread the message. Just live life. That's what I, and what I take from this is it, 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 this helps me. This is a part of my recovery. This is part of grieving and what you guys do is awesome as well.